excellent afternoon viewers if you are just joining us i say welcome this is where conversations are real and you're on another edition of real talk with Kike. today we are giving you nothing short of real talk last episode we had um real discussion with our guest debo adeniro who spoke at length on the place of leadership and accountability in our dear country today we are not far from leadership and we are going straight into the response of leadership on the crisis at hand in the country you know me well i don't do this alone of course i have my exciting opinionated co-host let me start with marshall marshall how are you doing my husband <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Kike, good to be here, good to be here. And um, your energy, it's a little turned down. I, I was know. wondering why that was. Um, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, yeah. I'm yeah, feeling yeah, here. Yeah, put some fuel, put some fuel. Hi, Dami. Nigeria is exhausting all of them. Even me, I'm exhausted. My exhausted are finished. Oh. But you know when you get to the tail, I mean, and there's no, you're at your wits. We're at our wits now. It's really discouraging. But I miss the whole this, um, thing where I'm trying to find hope. And I hope it's a beautiful afternoon with everyone watching us today. Like, we brought it again, Real Talk with Kike. Yes. To my left, Marshall. Marshall. And to my right, Kike. <laughs> Voila! All right. Uh, let, let's, let's reconcile with our history in Nigeria today with, on this day in history, please stay with us. On this day in history, Exactly nine years ago, on the 3rd of June, 2012, Dana Aircraft 992, a scheduled domestic commercial passenger flight from Abuja to Lagos, Nigeria, crashed into a furniture works and printing press building in Ijushaga, neighborhood of Lagos. The crash resulted in the deaths of all 153 people on board and 10 more on the ground. And the crash of flight 992 is the deadliest aviation disaster involving a McDonnell Douglas MD. 83, as well as the second deadliest involving an MD-80 series aircraft behind NX Adra Avroprimate Flight 1308. It is also the second deadliest aircraft crash on Nigerian soil behind the Kano Air disaster of 1973. Also on this day in 2013, Babatunde Fashila, who was the governor of Lagos State at the time, officially unveiled the cenotaph and laid reef at the site of the crash to mark the first year remembrance of crash victims. Victims. Wow, on this day in history, it's, it's so it's so weird that another thing just happened today. And Damilala, let me start with you. What's your take on this day in history? Wow, I think um, it was a sad one back then. It mm. was the Dana crash at the um, Jewish Shaga area. I think when it happened, I was still living with my parents far back in Festac. And coincidentally, somehow in life, I found myself around that area. And of course, the reception, it has not left the minds of the people there. It feels like fresh. I've heard it a couple of times from people around. Ah, you can, you can remember that time that plane crashed. It felt like, it felt like a monumental thing that happened. But um, it happened that year. And um, I, I, I'm sorry to say that we are still crashing even in 2021 which is the way forward how do we help nigeria mm. are we not still crashing yeah we are just um incidentally this morning we just had the news of the plane that skidded off the <laughs> uh, <laughs> runway and um all sorts of jokes trust nigerians spring up jokes about these things but uh, my sister-in-law was supposed to be in that plane that crashed wow. yes yeah, she was she was she resumed for duty but opted to be on the ground detail. So I don't know how they run their things, but she narrowly escaped death by the whiskers. Um, it's so sad that, like you said, we're still crashing. Uh, we just hope that it gets a lot better. We can only hope for the better. Maybe okay. with our new name. Ah, we'll, no. we'll, we'll be talking about that, you know, and I think I just want to touch on, you know, um, Fashola. I just feel that, you know, back in the days, I, I, let me speak for myself, I felt is his energy, his presence, mm. more. The power government. The power, exactly. Yeah. But now, you know, and it's, it's, it's worrisome for me that when he has gotten to another place of power, which is being a minister, I cannot really feel what he's doing compared to when he was a governor, compared <sighs> to when he was serving even under his, uh, his, his, his principal at the time. So, 
you know, just hearing what he just what he did then and back now to how people now make fun of the minister, you know, makes me think about mm. I, I think drawing from what you said, it's more like for me, it's more like he was the number one man in Lagos. Being the minister does not make him the number one man mm -hmm. in that seat. Mm -hmm. So I will say that maybe, permit me to use the word, there are several other principalities and powers on that, or in that office, not on the seat. It might, so it might be tight for him to exhume so much energy, which he did in Lagos. And we saw what Lagos was when it was Fashola. Yeah. And um, the next administrator brought it a bit lower than the standard he left. So it's like we have rigmarole and we are trying to just dwindle and find our feet around governance, especially in Lagos. So for him to have left Lagos and went to Abuja, then when the portfolios came, there were three offices all together. It felt like, oh, Fashola is a superpower. Hmm? I was looking at them. If you are talking okay. about Ambody, <laughs> Ambody was impactful to the society that I belong to. Okay. Ambody did a lot of things, but his hands were tied. So we need to differentiate how some people belong to a community that is given the freedom to do, yeah. exercise whatever yeah, thing they want to do. And the other party that is saying, you know what, you cannot hold me to ransom. I have to do what is right. Which one And was? I think that that was the challenge that yeah, the other administration would came into power after um, um, Fashola, you know, was facing. Anyway, it's not about that's not the discussion <laughs> for today. I think that is giving me a little bit of energy when I heard about <laughs> God, you know, I'm one of them. Anyway, it's time to take a quick message from our sponsors. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Today we are visiting the talking point of Buari's response to the nation's crisis and the agitation of our fellow brothers in the Southern eastern part of the country. The presidential response came from an unusual mannerism of the president. The president is seen to be communicating more uh, from his spokesman and media aides, but on this occasion, after security briefing, he addressed the press and those present at the former gathering, including the service chiefs, uh, also they were really, 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 you know, happy about that, especially knowing that he was speaking from the heart. And that leads us to our first talking point today. You know, I must start with you, <laughs> that the president now is ready to act after the chairman of Independent National Electoral yeah, Commission, that's the INEC, uh, which is uh, Professor Yakubu, and he spoke on the series of attacks on facilities of the electoral yeah. body across the country. You know, Marshall, I must ask you that what do you make of his bold action or statement that was done? by the president. Well, you call it bold. Not too mm. many Nigerians think that was bold or being courageous. So we, when you talk about boldness and courageousness, we want to see that in Sandisa Forest. We want to see that in the fight against insurgency and Boko Haram. We want to see that in the fight against Israel. We want to see them being brought to book. We want to... Uh, some people thought, or some people are of the narrative that the president shouldn't have told certain notion in expressing or responding to uh, uh, the rising crisis in the southeast as a war situation he shouldn't have used war terms or war language or war body language or assertions to address that crisis it's a civil crisis and he, he sh as a president for so long so much has been expected of him to do Today. and then to come out now to say those of you who people who are talking about this or beating drums of war for those of us who saw the war and fought the war this and that we will deal with them with all you know i'm paraphrasing now we will deal with them with the way you know we dealt with the war or something like that it was quite unfatherly unhealthy for the crisis you know, so many thanks for that. And I think that uh, this leads me to another question that I would like to ask Dami. You know, there are quite a number of people who have said that his action during the rampant school kidnappings or and the killings of the people in the north is not the same energy that he has exhibited in the last few days or in the last 24 hours, especially when he came saying that, you know, was coming after the evil people. What, what, what do you have to say to that? Do you think that um, that is what we should expect from the first father of the nation or the country? Uh, it's very funny to me because, um, like what Marshall said, this decadence had happened over a year. Let's say um, 
let's put a 365 day plan okay. and something had been concurrently happening mm -hmm. for 200 days out of 365 then you're left to 165 days then at that 165 you want to do what you have not done in the last 200 days it can't measure up it's not now that he yeah. should have been taking these actions it's not now that we should just hear him speak because in my head it's like some people have gone to concord with baba and like see is evil people that want to cause problem in the country come mm. outside and come come mm. after them mm. because we've not heard him speak when we need him to speak no better late then, than so, never better late, no, than, better late never. than never mm. but now I, I will borrow the, um, the I think, I, I, I cannot remember particularly what event was it that the Oni of Ife spoke and spoke bitterly. And the man said, we talk too much. We have always been talking, talking and talking. You do concession, you do training, you do talk meeting, submitting, under meeting, above the meeting, and everything talks still ends on talk. No action. No genuine action. So if, if, then you think that Nigeria should not make a joke out of it and because it feels that they will still come and talk. After they talk, we're still back to the same level. You're it's right. not so difficult. Like we talk about some of these things sometimes and Marshall is like, how much do you even use to track numbers? How much, do you even, how much does it cost us? But do we prefer to continue wasting the life of people? Now it shows me whatever happened like um, four days back shows me that yes, there's a class segregation in the country. If the hip hop people can say their people should sit at home, then who is actually governing Nigeria? All right, so I understand your point, and I think that for the first family of, of the nation, you know, I expect a father should try to bring peace, to make peace to return to the southeast instead of his statement saying that, you know what, is going to discipline them. Do you understand? Which is part of the challenges we are facing. You know, quite brain? a number of people. <laughs> you know, I'm happy that you touched on on, on, on of if I think yeah. I also posted it on my page. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And even though I got a lot of calls from it, quite a number of people, it was a divided opinion. They have the opinion that on, on your Bifa is also part of the challenges we are facing today. That is not what I... What is but he puts himself in an inclusion. But for the first time that he's coming out publicly in a platform where quite a number of decision makers are there. The number you understand? two, number three, number you know, four. And he's, and he's saying that, you know what, I'm not also clean. I'm saying to you that mm. we have a lot of talk shop that we, we keep doing. There are no implementation going on, you know. So it's a challenge for, for me when I see a, the first father of the nation, so to speak, to coming out to speak like that. Sometimes that's why I, I just feel that everybody mm. has been, you know, craving for him to speak from his heart. But I'm sorry to say this, sometimes these mm. people, we, they need to be, their words need to be scripted because it could be taken out of context. Maybe what he said was not what he meant yes, to say, okay. but because of the anger, because of the disappointment, you understand, and the reason why it was spilled like that. But if he had been scripted from any of his aides or any of his way, probably we might not be here talking about this. Probably we'll be saying that, oh, Gary Bar should not be the one discussing with all Femi should not That's be the one addressing us, let him come out and speak to us from, the, from his heart. And he has been out to speak to us from his heart, and yet, out of, well, the out, out, out of the heart, the heart speak it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask that, what part of the heart did he speak from? What it part of the really heart? It was from the heart. Mm -hmm. okay? It's just sad, it's hard, sad in so many Nigerians. Um, th there's this uh, voice note trending now online Which of, one? I don't remember his name, who was called a professor. Who was called to come in for a book lunch by an Igbo professor who was mm -hmm. launching his book in Abuja, and he went ballistic. He went, he, or he ranted about how the North is no longer going to cooperate with the Igbos, and he called the Igbos all sorts of names and all that. And I said, "Is this how low we've descended? We is this how low we've fallen? The desegregation is just so obvious, so and obvious. to have the father of the nation come to amplify that, and then here we mm. are hearing the rumors or mm. the news of." Um, the uh, Malani, Abu Malami, the AGF, as, as writing a memo to the president to declare a state of emergency on we'll the constitution. I hope we'll get to that as well. Mm. I just hope we'll get I to mean, that. It's just a sad situation that we are in in our country. And sometimes, you know, when I see some people celebrating that they are now citizens of another country, ah. I mm. ask myself, can you actually fault them? 
if Nigeria you was can't. in a better place of state, if Nigeria was actually contributing to the lives of people's self-development, you know, it maybe we will not be where we are today. Maybe we will not be having a lot of brain drainage where people are ready to, you know, what's it's it? not maybe I want to we will <laughs> not. <laughs> I want to flee from all sorts of challenges that ah. we have, I'm facing in my own motherland, you know, and mm. this is where I'm beginning to co constantly call out ah. our leaders because I want a better future for my children. Mm. Yes, my children might have another opportunity to say, no, I'm a citizen of Plan another B. country, but what about people who do not <laughs> have the opportunity or the alternative, you know, and hence the reason why people like us are still here. Most of my father is not in this country. Do you understand? My siblings are not here, and this is from my father's side. And it's sad how some of my family members, the closest people to me, will say that, Kike, it's time for you to leave. But, you know, there's still some level of, of hope, thinking that, you know what, things will get better, thinking that, you know what, I have a better opportunity here. But the better opportunity that I'm talking about, it's not easy. Oh. But it, this better opportunity is because you can afford it. Let me Let's just you, put Kike. it on that template. Let me ask you, Kike. You were elected into office, and 95% of the people who elected you into office were from a certain region. And forgive my miscalculation, 7%, the remaining 7%, 97. if 95 voted you, the remaining 7%, forgive my miscalculation, are from another region. What should I expect from you, Kike? The question is oh, to you. Okay. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we return, I will answer that question. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. I to know you are still right there with us. In case you just joined the show, today's conversation is presidential response to the crisis in the nation. Don't forget that you can be part of this conversation by, you know, calling our phone lines, you know, 0809. 8877400. It's showing on your screen right now. And of course, you can also make comments on our social media platform, Real Talk with Kike. And of course, our Talk with Kike on Twitter page. And we are also streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and on Real Talk with Kike. And of course, on Silverbird. Um, you know, Marshall mm -hmm. earlier we're talking about also, but the decisive um, genocidal <laughs> statement <laughs> of employing war especially when it comes to his choice of words, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, and with a lot of say, with a lot of people coming to say that, you know what, that is causing unnecessary civil unrest mm -hmm. and destruction, especially when it comes to, you know, criticizing one religion or the other or coming to attack another religion, which is the Southeast. What's your take on it? Mm, well, like I said, I was trying to inundate is, uh, what I was trying to inundate was that the fact that we had expected Baba, as we call him, mm. the father of the nation, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm. commander in chief, mm. to take the nation as his nation mm. in oneness, in wholeness. Uh, but we've seen him come to handle certain people from a certain extraction with a different body language, with a different tone, with a different hand. Mind you, one thing that is not so publicized is. The killings currently going on, being perpetrated right now uh, by mem unknown gunmen. We still are comfortable <laughs> calling them unknown gunmen in the southeast. But we're beginning to see video evidence, recordings of members of the Nigerian army, members of the police force, uh, uh, executing these guys in the southeast. We're beginning to see videos of them shooting uh, in the, uh, people, uh, citizens, uh, uh, at, at will. You know, and nothing has been said about that. Can this go on unabatedly in the north without having Lai Mohammed move swiftly or having the president move swiftly? You know, so there seems to be a huge divide. A lot of that is happening in the north, Marshall. There are a lot of schools where you see <coughs> all these Boko Haram adopting all these school children. School children. Mm -hmm. If I want to happen actually 48 hours ago. Did you say Boko Haram? Yeah. Boko Haram abducting children. Bandits. Kike, you didn't hear me say Bandits. army. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear me say police. Mm -hmm. Boko Haram is a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. The Absolutely. Nigerian army is a well-respected armed force. I agree. Not Boko Haram. If bandits are abducted, it's on the one hand, it's a crime, it's a criminal offense. I do know that there is insurgency in the north. It's a huge concern. It's labeling us already in, Af in the entire world as yeah. the hub of terrorist Terrorists. activity yeah. activities. But we don't want to be known as a nation that commits a crime against its own citizens. All right, citizen. I have to interrupt there your thoughts. We have a caller on the line. Hello, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from Otaku. What's your contribution on the topic at hand, please? Okay, uh, in respect to 
pronouncement and spreading of the media about what uh, the president said. So, uh, my third, uh, I would like to understand, uh, because, uh, like what your young man was saying on the studio there about uh, the president, like, uh, taking it to be on a one sided issue. So, now basically, in several parts of the country, we all understand, but we cannot stop killing the security men that are securing you here, burning island offices. So, all that shows that you are trying to make sure that there will be no election in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And they expect the president to keep calm, you know, such thing are not something that we begin to put our hand on, people begin to keep the security who are supposed to guide us. All right, many, yeah, yes, I understand, yes. Amadi. My life, my life, my life, my life, my life. All right, many, many thanks, Amadi, for your contribution on the show. You know, the Marshall, I understand what you are saying, and I know that is especially when we, well, let, let me return you back to his tweets because I know that his tweets has incited a lot of widespread criticism, mm -hmm. you know, condemning him from abroad and also in Nigeria. Yeah, it's tantamount to inciting violence, and hence the reason why I would say that Twitter also deleted the tweets after many reports. And well, you no, know, what, what, what do you what do you make of this presidential firm words of action, especially me listening to Lai Mohammed's um, interview? I think mm -hmm. yesterday or early this. Mm -hmm. Morning, where it was the, where it was comparing um, the president and Inam Dikano's tweets, and I'm saying to myself, what kind of comparison is, is that? that? This actually speaks volume on how the state of the mind and how you can bring down the president of our nation of our country down to Inam Dikano. Can you compare Inam Dikano to? President Buhari, what, what, what do you have to say to this, especially Twitter at least mm -hmm. deleting the I want to borrow message. the energy of Dami here. Mm -hmm. Dami, mm -hmm. Lai Mohammed, your uncle, said ah. that ah. President Muhammad of Buhari's tweet <laughs> okay. that I give Jack that. Dorsey deleted because they felt so. it was tantamount, like she said in the right word, tantamount of inciting violence. Mm -hmm. They felt it too. Nigerians, did, it wasn't Nigerians who deleted it. It, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't outside, a Nigerian who deleted it. They deleted the Twitter, deleted it. And my mom now comes to say... Accuse uh, them of double they, standard. They are, I mean, that me, please. Of double standard. Double of, all double thing, of all things to accuse somebody for of double standard. Why you people were giving us, uh, what was that bill? What that bill again? Social uh, media, the uh, social, uh, media, uh, social media, hate, media hate speech. Hate they speech. did not delete it to... We should be fear. It's just that we don't have the fear of God. Mm. And like sometimes, uh, the underlying factor that has dealt with us so much is greed. Mm. And when we don't really exhibit so no, much but, intelligence. But, 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 but the aspect or the part of life, Mohammed, like Kike was rightly saying, I mean, bringing down the, I mean, the president made That's, it, what, I'm, but that's what I'm saying. I, I wouldn't even go with what No, Kike that's had. like my people will say they have, you, they have put you in charge. Then you cannot even take charge. The, the office of Mr. Lai Mohammed is a very vital office. Mm -hmm. Information. Mm -hmm. We need to know. What is mass media doing? Information, education, and entertainment. So when we are not even informed right, when the person sitting in that office is not even... Right. So yeah, do you understand? Right. If you, you, we, we need to begin... We need to go back to the root of our problem. It's just like having a chip of air, air staff that cannot fly. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? <laughs> well, so, yes, so it has a background with information, but I think that the media aid, the Minister of Information, they have not done too well in presenting cases to Nigerians. So I feel that the comparison is unnecessary and it shows desperation from their ends. But at the same time, I think that the, they should abide by the community of public space. If Twitter is saying that do not use ill words, if not, we'll do A, B, C, and D. I uh -huh. want them to understand that they are not above the laws that have been put in place, you know. And that's the reason why we expect people like that to lead by example. We have seen a lot of uh, other examples of uh, presidents from international bodies. Mm -hmm. We know the likes of Trump. We know uh, the Indian president as well, mm -hmm. who as well have also been in this same um, mm -hmm. format of Rockets. where, in fact, I think they deleted their, their yeah. Twitter they handle. Delete everything. So, uh, uh, again, we have another caller from um, Asabai Ingozi. Ingozi, many thanks for calling. Hello, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. Uh, please, uh, I think I'm on with the uh, topic on the television. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Look, my own is different me. As I'm now, if you can see me, I'm weeping and crying. Because my people in the ear are calling, I've been calling them this morning, they are inside bush. Hmm. And what we are telling us in the television is different thing. 
from evil state. They are not going house to house in the night to carry them. My people now, they are inside bush, inside bush. Please, talk to the nation, Nigerians. If they want to do let them go to those that have. Not the poor man who will only go to the farm and climb up to eat. He cannot get up to eat. He okay. cannot go outside. He cannot sleep in his mother's house. Now sleeping inside bush. Because of what? Please. That is my own. No, I'm God, we are not on a bit of burning media discussion. That is for the top, top people. But the one that concerns us, the poor. Me now, I'm a cleaner. You think that that in a moment, I make it the crown to make sure that my people feel. And the, the people I'm suffering for for this now, they're inside bush because of people. Please, that's my own. You make on an airport for this emo people place. I beg, I beg. All right. All right, many thanks Thank for that. I mean, that. listening to him, you know, it's how? what, uh, uh, is it how? Yeah, right? Because it, the voice sounds like him. <laughs> no. You know, I, it, it's just for me to say that, you know, that there's a Yoba day that says, I'm Toba Lumo. Yeah. You know, it's when you are wearing the shoes, you know, where it right. pinches. There are quite a number of people ah. out there that they are facing this banditry challenge. You know, all the infrastructural facility, there's no lights, there's no, there's no food. You know, not to now talk of they are running away from their shelter, all in the name of safety. You know, and it's sad that you see callers like this saying that, you know what, I'm actually in it. You know, like, it's not what you're saying that we are actually talking. I'm in it presently. You know, Dami, what do you have to say to this? Because, because there are a lot of challenges that we are facing globally, but because we are not the one facing it directly, we might not be able to even misinterpret it as much as the pain. No, uh, if you say we are not the ones facing it directly, we are facing it indirectly. This woman, yes, by extension, are. might be somebody you know. Mm. By extension, somebody who knows somebody that knows somebody. So look at what, hear what she said. She talked about her receiving 16,000 naira a salary. Where we are still dragging 15,000 naira. 15, naira. Yeah. And you know how many pe people feed on 15,000? Mm -hmm. Then 15,000 is not even enough for you to feed. Then you are not running in the bush. 15,000 15, naira to feed who? Now we are still on minimum wage. We have not even settled down on minimum wage on what is appropriate is today they will pass bill tomorrow they will pass bill we are passing bill as if nepa is giving us bill every other time yet no concrete implementation and now people have to flee i imagine like kike as she's fine like this now she has to flee her home because of a fellow nigerian i mean sometimes it's like you cannot continue to run away from these things the last time we wanted to face it was what happened with the answers we knew how they shut us up is this really how we'll continue even media they say it's freedom of speech but your freedom after the speech we cannot guarantee then everybody is hiding in the holes who is going to speak out how are we going to get past all of this chaos it's tiring. It's draining. You know, talking about it's talk, draining. You talking the, the about you talking the about the bill. You know, the statement. There was a statement from President saying that he has been acting according to the Constitution, ah. and his administration has been totally ha. constitutional. And hence, there was no reason for attempting of sabotaging his regime. <laughs> his, regime. You know, his administration. <laughs> you know, and and I think that it's important for <laughs> us to take it from there because you know there are quite a number of people <laughs> saying that you know uh, is not acting according to constitutional, and I'm. Talking from this time out, when uh, what's it called? When we we had um, San uh, Femi, Femi Fal Falano. Falano, who also came on the show, that said that you know what, well, he has not been acting to constitution. But you know, Masha, what what's your take with everything that is happening? And the reason why I said earlier that people are not okay. We have another caller from Cardona State, Ambrose. Many thanks for calling. Hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon, Ambrose. Yeah. Good afternoon. Welcome. What's your Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Can. Please go ahead, please. Apologies, I we might have to let that go. Masha, what, what's your take uh, on Kike, this? My heart is so full. I, I'd like to take it, take us back a bit. Um, Ngozi, I'd just like to say, Ngozi, she was saying, um, we're here talking about what affects mm. the top people. I'm sure the authorities okay. also heard your complaints, and I'm sure that uh, I will plead with the authorities in the southeast, uh, the, the security agents, their agencies, to look into this. I mean, so much is going on with um, people fleeing their homes, like Dami has also overemphasized. And I'm sure, Ngozi, because uh, I'm sure you're still watching, that something will oh. come, uh, will be done about that. Amadi, who called earlier from PH and was saying, I mean, the Easterners are burning uh, installations of government and uh, destroying infrastructures of, of police and all that. You see, this is what it is coming to. 
I, I'm, well, we, we are not in support of people destroying governments no, or no, public no, no, installations. No, no, no. We're not no, 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 no. in support of that. But we are saying, look, it is as a result of the inaction or the action of the expected leaders or the leader himself, the number one man, uh, his inaction mostly, that is leading to the people saying, look, I think we are not uh, one of the nation. I think we should... Uh, agitate for our own nation and I think we wouldn't want anything that has to do with Nigeria and that's that's where we're coming from and we're saying look more needs to be needs to be done, done. and on the um, aspect of the president act acting constitutionally Kike there is <laughs> nothing constitutional about coming out and going ballistic about how you would handle a certain people from a certain extraction who are civilians in a war uh, tone. Uh, manner or in a war tone there's nothing constitutional about it and then here we remember i just i i cheated something i chipped in something i hope we'll get to that about the news making the rounds on the street that you know an internal memo from the agf i hope we'll get to that because i really have a lot to pour out on that on that matter they, and interestingly we are beginning to see more people from the national assembly speak out against what's currently happening, the president's inaction. The president has to act and act appropriately and not just ask these people to go and do Operation Python dance, Operation oh, Crocodile yes, Operation, and then they go, and then you see them doing videos when they are being charged to go pick up people. There are videos of these army guys yeah. on their way, and their commanders are telling them, go and pick up anybody. Remember, anybody you see is a Biafra, is a beast, is, is an iPod. Pick them up, man, woman, uncle, auntie, pick I mean, and then we so, I saw Marshall. The reason why I said that, um, for me, let me let me speak for myself that Borari has been constitutional in some areas, and that that is because when he wants to raise a new law or when he wants to raise a new bill, he will pass it through the Senate. When he also wants to appoint a new <laughs> chief of staff, it will pass it through the Senate. So as far as I'm concerned, I need to find a balance. <laughs> I need you to understand that he has been okay. going through Constitution, facing his quadly. <laughs> But, so, yeah, but. so we have Tokwe from Lagos. Tokwe, many thanks for calling. Mm. What's your contribution on the topic at hand, please? Uh, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Yeah, well, I am calling from Lagos. Okay. okay. I would like to contribute this. Please go ahead. We say to realize the truth, and we say to do the right thing in Nigeria. And may I say, until Nigerian police, if the Nigerian government do the, uh, the, the needful by sponsoring all the forces in Nigeria, the same way Nigerian police and other forces go abroad to go for peacekeeping and they come back home successfully performing their duty accordingly. Mm. Are you hearing me? Yes, please. We are all ears. All right. If they can earmark some money or some, some, some funds for the Nigerian police and the army and others, are you hearing me, to fight the local battle in Nigeria. I am sure we see our competent police officers that have all it takes, we have Nigerian army that have all it takes to face these people scarily and make sure they, are, they return peace to Nigeria. But when you send somebody to, to the bush, to go and fight war or whatsoever, and he's not having food to eat, water to drink, how do you expect that person to perform well? That is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, the actual hands that are supposed to fight the war, they will use them. Mm. They will use one hand to fight the war. And the equipment needed for this war to, 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 to be effective, they did not provide it for them. So how do you expect Nigerian police and Nigerian army to perform uh, brilliantly on this little issue? That is by the one, by the side. Number two, Number the two. real government of today refuses to, 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 to listen to the truth and they refuse to do the right thing. If they are ready to do the right thing, this problem is just a little problem in Nigeria that we can say and we can overcome. 
within a short period of time. That's my whole contribution for now. All right, many thanks, Tokma, for your contribution. Let's go on another break when we return. We'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Many thanks for staying with us, you know, and uh, I'm sure we've been discussing back and forth on everything that has been happening, especially when it comes to our presidential response or speech regarding the South and East. I think it's important for us to quickly delve into uh, trending stories, which is part of the things that also still affect us all. And one of the uh, trending issues or topic that caught our attention is that of the AGF Malami in secret memo asked Buhari to suspend Nigerian constitution. He declared uh, martial law, urging him to move swiftly to suspend the fundamental rights of all Nigerians as guaranteed under the chapter five of the constitution. Marshall, I know that you have a lot to say to this. What's your submission on this? Okay, I think that was chapter four. Just, just, uh, chapter, just four. Yeah, chapter four, yeah. yeah so just so we're and please remember it's your law, martial law. Before it's you give right. your submission, we have a phone call from yeah. Cardinal Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed, can you hear me? Uh, what I'm speaking is that uh, no matter that I'm from Katina, I don't like, I don't like what is happening at the southeast because these people they are creating enmity for us with the northerners mm. because uh, in north here, yeah, Katina has been uh, taking children away, especially for a ransom of money, and the government has never ever wanted to send troops of soldiers inside bush to go and look for those kids. But in the east, I don't know why they are killing the innocent youth with that weapon. They are not fighting the soldiers. The same soldiers will be searching for them. They are killing the soldiers because I can watch media. I see a lot of dead bodies in the hospital at Owele and Omaha. Please, let anybody not to create any enemy for we the Northerners. We don't have any problem with the evils. Please. Please, I'm telling my people to tell the soldiers to withdraw back to barracks. Stop killing the youth. Stop killing the small, small children. They are growing up. I can see a children of 14 years, 18 years. They have been shooting them with weapons. Because military, they said, they have rule of engagement. Their rule of engagement that is that they will never fight anybody that is not with weapons. When they were in Liberia and they alone, they are not fighting killing people that will, they are not with weapons. So that now, we, they have set the rule of engagement, arresting uh, uh, young girls, young, uh, young boys, killing them, shooting them as hair. Please, that is my own contribution. Many I'm thanks, Mohamed. Please, <coughs> thank many, you. Many thanks, Mohamed, for calling, for lending your voice hmm. regarding the challenges we are facing, especially when hmm. it comes to division of regions and criticism among ourselves. Masha, you are going to take, give yeah, your so submission that, that on part the, of the Constitution, AGF which, yes, Malami. Which, which yeah. Malami is... Uh, was alleged, mm. which Malami was alleged to be, have written to the president on, is the part of the constitution that gives uh, the right uh, of freedom to Nigerian citizens. It's, not, it's a constitution. But what's very appalling is uh, one section of the constitution which Malami is using to, say, to give absolute power to the president to uh, withhold the freedom and the rights of the entire citizens or the citizenry. And to think that someone who has sworn his allegiance, total allegiance, to protect the law of the land, who is, should be an embodiment of the law itself, the custodian of the law of the country, would be asking or advocating or seeking that the, for an abrogation or a, a would I say, uh, a dissolution, so to speak, of that law is appalling. It only rigs of what people have been saying, a hidden agenda. I agree with your submission, and I think that the AGF Malami advising Buhari to declare state so of emergency, emergency or a martial law is not the solution to our problem, especially in this case. It is, it is like repeating the same approach of answers that took place you know October early last year. year basically you can't use the same force or military power to address the needs and the agitation of your people especially from those who are actually facing the challenges right now which are the southeast part of the region i don't know why we we don't learn i don't know if that's part of our challenges that we are going through presently especially when it comes to 
repressing issues that we should have brought into a place of peace, a place of where we should find uh, harmony. You know, the approach should be dialogue. You know, coming together and look, looking for a swift implementation of what is, should be concluded on the challenges at hand. What is it? I, sometimes I really don't understand why our leaders actually think the way they think. Look, I don't know why it's, it's not inviting the, the concerned parties, so to speak. Why is it that Malami is not advising the president using a democratic approach that fits the system? That we are all we are talking about democratic human rights. We are talking about fundamental human rights. rights. These are all the distractions that I feel that, you know, plays us into, into us ab abandoning the real issues at hand. And we are going about it in another different way. Way. And Masha, you know, sometimes I, I, I wonder, yes, you know, I was telling my kids that I was going to take them to the East, which is part of the place that I'm from, because listen to all these challenges. I have an older child who goes on internet to see all of this. And he reminded me last week, I said, Mommy, I thought you said you want to take us to Delta. This same place? I said, I no, know. not anymore. You would have changed your mind. Just look at that. Uh, but I would like to also borrow what so they call us from Lagos. So we have from Please hold on, um, Damila, I apologize. Juliet, yeah, many thanks for calling. Um, I think everyone is trying to find a solution to the security system in Nigeria. Yes, yes. Then, I would like to advise the federal government to give support to the government to establish the police. By doing that, they will complement the effort of the federal government. Then, the federal government is seeing the establishment of uh, state but it's a confrontation. That is wrong. The, the time has come for federal government to give full support to 36 states of the federation, including Abuja, to establish state police. It's a sort of complementary to the federal government. But the federal government is seeing it as a, uh, as a, as a confrontation, um, which is wrong. The federal police cannot cover all parts of Nigeria. Absolutely. All right. Many, many thanks for your... Yes, yeah, yes. we understand. Many thanks for your contribution. You know, because of time, I, I need to quickly go into another trending story okay. that also caught our attention. And that was that of the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, who says that the commission is yet to auction assets and properties recovered from former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Deziani Alison Maduke, due to administrative exigencies. <laughs> Dami, let me start with you. What's your take on it? <laughs> EFCC. They are yet to auction. If they auction, who do they want to auction it to? Where does the proceed of the auction go to? I thought that um, Abdul Rashid Bawa's regime, well, is quite young, but we should have been seeing some remarkable standards or remarkable strides. Looking at EFCC, they are not a saint in this whole situation too. Because I will categorically say that I had, I had an uncle somewhere in life who was in the EFCC web. He had to sell his property and the property was bought by an EFCC official. So how then do you come to the table with your hands clean? How then do you want to tell us that because of, um, um, what's it called, um, ex some exigencies, you cannot unction? Why you unction it? Where is the money going to? What are they using the money for? This Yanis property is not the only property that has been confiscated. We Iboris property is there. We have some abacha loots that are repatriated back and forth, and they will loot the loot and still re loot the loot. So, who exactly is not telling us the truth? That was where I was going to that the last caller, Topper from Lagos, actually said the truth. Our leaders don't like the truth. And so, how do we move on without the blunt truth? All right. So, you know, to hear again that um, the value of the jewelry is estimated at 40 million dollars is still ah. you know absurd to my years especially ah. when i wonder that the woman called desiani was just you know <laughs> displaying all of this wealth at the time i'm thinking why ah. on earth will someone need such amount of jewelry ah. and i think that some of our looters should be examined for mental wellness i'm being honest with you sometimes i, I feel that uh, you know this this, this challenge <laughs> of uh, entitlement or i want to have it all i don't know if, if it's the poverty mentality of how uh, the foundation where they're coming from 
on another note, was she actually using this jewelry to launder money, you know, hoping to sell them afterwards? afterwards you know, there are a lot of ways to look at this thing because uh, apparently the administrative process to recover funds back to financially sinking economy that we know is we are slowly getting in there. The people are saying that we've recovered from recession. Yeah. I don't think so. We waste time and form unnecessary bureaucracy when it comes to us acting swiftly, swiftly on implementation. So I'm asking myself, the reason Nigerians don't have trust in the system is all because of this. We need to, you know, be, you know, have some conscience and be forthcoming in whatever thing we are doing and understand that there are quite a number of people looking at us, especially international body, who are also interested in this and this matter. Uh, if we, if we, What's your take, Masha? Okay. Well, for me, Kika, I, I, I apologize to you. I know you're sentimental about it and, you know, you're passionate about what was her mental state i mean exhibiting what such an about? And all that. but i'll say to this particular story who auction f who auction f that's not would it auction design is this would it change the price of fish in the market hmm. would it put food on my table uh, would it make me protect me from the guys who want to take the life of my neighbor also you know so who auction help efcc should just go if they like auction if you like don't auction it's your problem no, but if you say yes, you should like auction and not. But these monies that have actually the been amassed and here, stolen. Sorry, Damien, the only news here I see is what Kike is saying. The mentality, the psyche of our leaders but who are it. amassing such wealth and, and, and going uh, nowhere and affluence and affluence. That's the only thing. The All problem right. I many, see many is that... Times, guys, because I know that we are running out of time. But before we sign off, I want to use this privilege to wish a close friend a happy birthday. She is one of the constructive instruments for the actualization of Real Talk with Kiket on radio. And she is gifted with insight and the ability to help individuals and help friends like me to understand my potentials and also where my strength lies especially when it give, comes to giving all this advice you know where uh, uh, in, 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 in the particular areas that you can actually tap into and she's no other than Bimbola Otsubu I know you know her as well she oh. yeah. and she's one of the people she, she was actually the one that also introduced that to me oh, she is the CEO of Captain Empire a clothing line that specializes in all sorts of African captain for both genders, she is one of the costume sponsors of Real Talk with Kika. Sometimes I wear some of her clothes to the studio. Uh, and I'm not. Yes, I'm I'm not. Not. So, I'm not. so I just yeah, want to no. say happy, birth, happy birthday to her. She will be uh, turning 45 wow. on wow. Sunday. So I will be going to her house to paint the town. We will have be it. or we will be. All right. You see what the sentiment is coming from? I, I, think, I, I think that we have a lot of people <laughs> coming to her. Even though I have a speaking engagement. Again, one of our sponsors, one of the ED of uh, Nigerian bureaus, Emmanuel's birthday is also today. Of wow. course, I will be doing all the shout outs on all my social media handle because Moses is telling me we need to round off now. On that note, we've come to the end of another episode of Road Talk with KK, and I hope that you all enjoyed today's um, uh, show with a lot of calls that came in. Very amazing colleagues of mine, the brilliant contribution of this show today was my beautiful, exciting, opinionated co host. I say, Marshall and Damilola. Thank you. And this is where we draw the curses of the show. I will say bye. bye. bye.